Hey, what up? It's chapter six. We're talking the lymphatic and immune systems. Let's get started. So in chapter six, we actually start with the medical specialties related to the lymphatic and immune systems. Here we have allergist, hematologist, immunologist, and oncologist. An allergist specializes in diagnosing and treating conditions of altered immunologic reactivity, such as allergic reactions. A hematologist specializes in diagnosing and treating diseases and disorders of the blood and blood-forming tissues. Hamat, hamato meaning blood, and ologist meaning specialist of. An immunologist is a specialist of the body, diagnosis, and treatment of disorders of the immune system. And finally, an oncologist is a specialist in diagnosing and treating malignant tumors such as tumors and cancer. The lymphatic system has three primary functions. These are to absorb fats and fat-soluble vitamins from the digestive system and transport them to the cells, return cellular waste products and excess fluid from the tissues to the circulatory system, and to serve as an important part of the immune system. The major structures of the lymphatic system are lymph fluid, lymph vessels, lymph nodes, tonsils, spleen, thymus, and lymphocytes, which are specialized white blood cells, and we're going to discuss those when we talk about the immune system. Intercellular fluid, also known as interstitial fluid, or tissue fluid, is plasma that flows out of the capillaries of the circulatory system and into the spaces between the cells. This fluid carries food, oxygen, and hormones to the cells. Lymph fluid, usually referred to simply as lymph, is intercellular fluid as it returns to the venous circulatory system. Lymph, which removes waste products from the cells, must be filtered by the lymph nodes before it re-enters the circulatory system. Lymph capillaries, which are microscopic, thin-walled tubes located just under the skin, carry lymph fluid from the tissues to the larger lymphatic vessels. Like veins, lymphatic vessels have valves to prevent the backward flow of fluid, and lymph always flows toward the thoracic cavity. The right lymphatic duct and the thoracic duct empty lymph into veins in the upper thoracic region. Lacteals are specialized lymph capillaries located in the villi of the small intestine. There, fat and fat-soluble vitamins are absorbed and carried into the bloodstream. Lymph nodes are small, bean-shaped structures located in lymph vessels that provide a site for lymphocyte production. These nodes filter lymph to remove harmful substances such as bacteria, viruses, and malignant cells as lymph flows through the node. Because of this function, swollen lymph nodes are often indications of a disease process. The tonsils are masses of lymphatic tissue that form a protective ring around the nose and upper throat. The veriform appendix and Peyer's patches protect against the entry of invaders through the digestive system. The veriform appendix is lymphatic tissue that hangs from the lower portion of the cecum of the large intestine. Peyer's patches are small bundles of lymphatic tissue located on the walls of the ileum of the small intestine. The spleen is a sac-like mass of lymphatic tissue located in the left upper quadrant of the abdomen, just inferior to the diaphragm and posterior to the stomach. The spleen filters microorganisms and other foreign material from the blood. The spleen forms lymphocytes and monocytes, which are specialized white blood cells with roles in the immune system. The spleen is hemolytic. This means that it removes and destroys worn out red blood cells. The spleen stores extra erythrocytes and maintains the appropriate balance between the red blood cells and the plasma in the circulation. The thymus is located superior to the heart. Although it is composed largely of lymphatic tissue, the thymus plays important roles in the endocrine and immune systems. Now, let's look at the pathology and diagnostic procedures of lymphatic structures. Lymphodentitis, also known as swollen glands, is an inflammation of the lymph nodes. Lymphadenopathy is any disease process usually involving enlargement of the lymph nodes. Persistent generalized lymphadenopathy, PGL, is the continued presence of enlarged lymph nodes. PGL is often an indication of the presence of a malignancy or deficiency in the immune system function. A lymphangiogram is a radiographic study of the lymphatic vessels and nodes with the use of a contrast medium to make these structures visible. A lymphangioma is a benign abnormal collection of lymphatic vessels forming a mass. Lymphedema is an abnormal accumulation of lymphatic fluid that causes swelling, usually in the arms or legs. Primary lymphedema, which is a hereditary disorder, may occur at any time in life. It can affect any of the limbs. Secondary lymphedema is caused by identifiable factors such as surgical removal or radiation of the lymph nodes in the treatment of cancer. This affects the limb nearest the treatment. Splenomegaly is an enlargement of the spleen. 
Notice that the word root for spleen is spelled with only one e. In splen, spleno. Splenorrhagia is bleeding from the spleen. The functions of the immune system are to protect the body from harmful substances including pathogens, allergens, toxins, and malignant cells. Pathogens are disease-producing microorganisms, allergens are substances producing an allergic reaction, and toxins are also known as poisons. Unlike other body systems, the immune system is not contained within a single set of organs or vessels. Instead, it depends on structures from several other body systems. The first role of the immune system is to prevent foreign substances from entering the body. However, several other body systems make up this important first line of defense. Intact skin wraps the body in a physical barrier that prevents invading organisms from entering the body. Intact means that there's no cuts, scrapes, or open sores. The respiratory system traps breathed-in foreign matter with nose hairs and the moist mucous membranes that line the respiratory system. Coughing and sneezing help expel foreign matter from the respiratory system. The digestive system uses the acids and enzymes produced by the stomach to destroy invaders that are swallowed or consumed with food. The lymphatic system structures and cells are essential components in fighting invaders once they have entered into the body. When infectious microorganisms enter the body, one way in which the immune system destroys them is through antigen-antibody reactions. An antigen is any substance such as a virus, bacterium, toxin, or tissue that the body regards as foreign. As foreign substances, antigens stimulate an immune response. An antibody is a disease-fighting protein created by the immune system in response to the presence of that specific antigen. The antigen-antibody reaction, also known as the immune reaction, involves binding these foreign antigens to antibodies to form antigen-antibody complexes. This tags the potentially dangerous antigen so that it can be recognized and destroyed by other cells of the immune system. The immune response requires the actions of many specialized cells. These can include lymphocytes, B cells, and T cells. And we'll discuss those further now. Lymphocytes are white blood cells that specialize so they can attack specific microorganisms. All lymphocytes are formed in bone marrow as stem cells. These cells undergo further maturation and differentiation in lymphatic tissue throughout the body, including the lymph nodes, spleen, thymus, tonsils, and Peyer's patches. The two major classes of lymphocytes are B cells and T cells. Each B cell, also known as a B lymphocyte, is designed to make only one specific antibody against a specific antigen. B cells are most effective against viruses and bacteria circulating in the blood. Immunoglobulin is a synonym for antibody. The classes of immunoglobulins, which are secreted only by B cells, are summarized in Table 6.3. When confronted with this type of antigen, B cells are transformed into plasma cells. Plasma cells produce and secrete antibodies coded to match the antigen. This process enables the body to destroy the antigen in the antigen-antibody response. Complement is a complex series of proteins that normally circulate in the blood in an inactive form. They are activated on contact with an antigen and aid the antibodies by puncturing the cell membrane of the antigen. T cells also known as T lymphocytes, are small circulating lymphocytes that have traveled to the thymus. There, they mature as the result of their exposure to thymosin. T cells contribute to the immune defense in two major ways, regulatory T cells coordinating immune defenses and cytotoxic T cells, killing infected cells on contact. Interferon, which is produced by the T cells, is a family of proteins released by cells when invaded by a virus. Interferon causes the non-infected cells to form an antiviral protein that slows or stops viral multiplication. Interferons are grouped into three categories, alpha, beta, and gamma. Lymphokines, which are produced by the T-cells, direct the immune response by signaling between the cells of the immune system. Lymphokines attract macrophages to the infected site and prepare them to attack. A macrophage, which is a type of phagocyte, protects the body by ingesting invading cells and by interacting with the other cells of the immune system. A phagocyte, which is a large white blood cell that can ingest and destroy substances such as cell debris, dust, pollen, and pathogens. This process is known as phagocytosis. Immunity is the state of being resistant or not susceptible to a specific disease. Natural immunity is passed from mother to fetus before birth. Immediately after birth, additional immunity is passed from mother to child through breast milk. Acquired immunity is obtained by development of antibodies during an attack of an infectious disease. For an example, after having chickenpox, 
antibodies are present against it. Artificial immunity, which is also known as immunization, is immunity that was acquired through vaccination. Examples of currently available vaccines include chickenpox, diphtheria, hepatitis B, influenza, measles, meningitis, mumps, pertussis, pneumonia, poliomyelitis, smallpox, tetanus, and typhoid. Important factors that influence the immune system's ability to respond are health, age, and heredity. The better the individual's general health, the more likely that the immune system can respond effectively. Disease strikes more easily when general health, and in particular the functioning of the immune system, is compromised. Older individuals usually have more acquired immunity. However, their immune systems tend to respond less quickly and effectively to new challenges. Genes and genetic disorders shape the makeup of antibodies and other immune cells. These factors influence the body's ability to respond. An opportunistic infection is a pathogen that normally does not cause disease, but is able to cause illness in a weakened host whose resistance has been decreased by a different disorder. Pathology and Diagnostic Procedures of the Immune System An allergy, also known as hypersensitivity, is an overreaction of the body to a particular antigen. An allergic reaction occurs when the body's immune system reacts to a harmless antigen, such as pollen, food, or animal dander as if it were a dangerous invader. An allergen is an antigen that is capable of inducing an allergic response. In a cellular response, also known as a localized or delayed allergic response, the body does not react the first time it is exposed to the allergen. However, sensitivity is established and future contacts cause symptoms that include itching, arrhythmia, and large hives. As an example, contact dermatitis is a skin reaction caused by a localized allergic response. A systemic reaction, also described as anaphylaxis, is a severe response to a foreign substance such as a drug, food, insect venom, or chemical. Symptoms develop very quickly and include swelling, blockage of air passages, and a drop in blood pressure. Without appropriate care, the patient may die within minutes. A scratch test is a diagnostic test to identify commonly troublesome allergens such as tree pollen and ragweed. Swelling and itching indicate an allergic reaction. Antihistamines are medications administered to block and control allergic reactions. An autoimmune disorder is a condition in which the immune system misreads normal antigens and creates antibodies and directs T-cells against the body's own tissues. Many of these disorders appear to be genetically transmitted and they affect most body systems. For reasons that are not understood, 75% of these diseases occur most frequently in women during the childbearing years. An immunodeficiency disorder is a condition that occurs when one or more parts of the immune system are deficient or missing. When the immune system is weakened, it is also described as being compromised. Some immunodeficiency disorders, such as congenital immunodeficiency, are hereditary. Other forms are caused by pathogens. The human immunodeficiency virus, also known as HIV, is a blood-borne pathogen that invades and then progressively impairs or kills cells of the immune system. Acquired immunodeficiency syndrome, also known as AIDS, describes the advanced stages of an HIV infection. ELISA, which is the abbreviation for Enzyme-Linked Immunoabsorbent Assay, is a blood test used to screen for the presence of HIV antibodies. However, this test may produce a false positive result. When the results of the ELISA test are positive, a Western blot test is performed to confirm the diagnosis. The Western blot test, which detects the presence of specific viral proteins, produces more accurate results. Now let's discuss treatment procedures of the immune system. Immunotherapy is a treatment of disease either by enhancing or repressing the immune response. In the treatment of allergies, immunotherapy is used to repress the immune response. In the treatment of cancers, immunotherapy is used to stimulate the immune response. Synthetic immunoglobulins, known as immune serum, are used as a post-exposure preventative measure against certain viruses, including rabies and some types of hepatitis. Synthetic interferon is used in the treatment of multiple sclerosis and some cancers. Monoclonal antibodies, or MABs for short, are antibodies produced in the laboratory. Currently, MABs are used in laboratory research, medical tests, and the treatment of some non-Hodgkin's lymphoma, melanoma, and breast and colon cancers. Immunosuppression is treatment used to interfere with the ability of the immune system to respond to stimulation by antigens. An immunosuppressant is a drug that prevents or reduces the body's normal reactions to invasions by disease or by a foreign tissue.
Immunosuppressants are used to prevent the rejection of donor tissue or to depress autoimmune disorders. A corticosteroid drug is a hormone-like preparation used primarily as an anti-inflammatory and as an immunosuppressant. A cytotoxic drug kills or damages cells. It is used as an immunosuppressant and as an antineoplastic. An antineoplastic blocks the growth of neoplasms and is used to treat cancer. A pathogen is a microorganism that causes a disease. A microorganism is a living organism that is so small it can only be seen with the aid of a microscope. Bacteria are a group of one-celled microscopic organisms. If we're just talking about one by itself, it's bacterium. The pathogenic types of bacteria include bacilli, rickettsia, spirochetes, staphylococci, and streptococci. Bacilli are rod-shaped spore-forming bacteria. Tetanus and tuberculosis are caused by bacilli. Rickettsia is a small bacterium that lives in lice, fleas, ticks, and mice. Rocky Mountain Spotted Fever, which is caused by Rickettsia rickettsii, is transmitted to humans by the bite of an infected tick. Spirochetes are spiral-shaped bacteria that have flexible walls and are capable of movement. Lyme disease, which is caused by the Spirochete borrelia burgdorferi, is transmitted to humans by the bite of an infected deer tick. Staphylococci are bacteria that form irregular groups or clusters. Bacterial pneumonia is caused by Streptococcus pneumoniae. Streptococci are bacteria that form a chain. Group A streptococci cause the form of severe pharyngitis that is commonly known as strep throat. A fungus is a simple parasitic plant. Some of these plants are harmless to humans and others are pathogenic. Aspergillosis, which is an infection caused by a fungus of the genus Aspergillus, may cause inflammation and lesions on or in any organ. Yeast is a type of fungus. Monoliasis, which is caused by the pathogenic yeast, Candida albicans, is an infection of the skin or mucous membranes. These infections are usually localized in the mouth or the vagina. A parasite is a plant or animal that lives on or within another living organism at the expense of that organism. Malaria, which is caused by a parasite that lives within certain mosquitoes, is transferred to humans by the bite of an infected mosquito. Viruses are very small infectious agents that live only by invading cells. Within the cell, the virus reproduces and then breaks the cell wall. The newly formed viruses are released so they can spread to other cells. Chickenpox, also known as varicella or VZV, is an acute, highly contagious viral disease that is characterized by fever and pustules. It is caused by the herpes virus varicella zoster and is transmitted by respiratory droplets or direct contact with sores. Cytomegalovirus is an infection caused by a group of large herpes-type viruses with a wide variety of disease effects. Herpes zoster, also known as shingles, is an acute viral infection characterized by painful skin eruptions that follow the underlying root of the inflamed nerve. This inflammation, which is caused by the chickenpox virus that remained dormant in a nerve, is reactivated years later when the immune system is compromised. Infectious mononucleosis, which is caused by the Epstein-Barr virus, is characterized by fever, a sore throat, and enlarged lymph nodes. Measles is an acute, highly contagious viral disease transmitted by respiratory droplets. It is characterized first by the appearance of coplic spots and then followed by the spreading of a skin rash. Coplic spots are small red spots with blue-white centers that appear on the lining of the mouth. Mumps is an acute viral disease characterized by the swelling of the parotid glands. The parotid glands are salivary glands located on the face just in front of the ears. Rabies is an acute viral infection that may be transmitted to humans by the blood, tissue, or saliva of an infected animal. Rubella, also known as German measles or three-day measles, is a viral infection characterized by fever and a diffuse, fine red rash. If the mother has rubella during the early stages of pregnancy, the disease may cause congenital abnormalities in the infant. Now let's check out the medications that we use to control infections. An antibiotic is a chemical substance capable of inhibiting growth or killing pathogenic microorganisms. Antibiotics are used to combat bacterial infections. A bactericide is a substance that causes the death of bacteria. Bactericides include primarily the antibiotic group of penicillins and cephalosporins. A bacteriostatic is an agent that inhibits, slows, or retards the growth of bacteria. 
These include primarily the antibiotic group of tetracyclines, sulfonamides, and erythromycin. An antiviral drug such as acyclovir is used to treat viral infections or to provide temporary immunity. Antibiotics are not effective against viruses. Oncology is the study of the prevention, causes, and treatment of tumors and cancer. The term cancer is used to describe over 200 different kinds of malignancies. Cancer attacks all body systems and is the second leading cause of death in the United States. Most cancers are named for the part of the body where the cancer first starts. Now let's discuss a few terms that are related to tumors. A tumor, also known as a neoplasm, is a new and abnormal tissue formation. Through a process known as angiogenesis, the tumor supports its growth by creating its own blood supply. Anti-angiogenesis is a form of treatment being developed that will cut off this blood supply to the tumor. Within a tumor, the multiplication of cells is uncontrolled, more rapid than normal, and progressive. A tumor may either be benign or malignant. Benign means not recurring, non-malignant, and with a favorable chance of recovery. For example, a myoma is a benign neoplasm made up of muscle tissue. Although not malignant, these tumors can cause problems through pressure on adjacent structures. Malignant means harmful, tending to spread, becoming progressively worse, and life-threatening. Malignant tumors tend to spread to distant body sites. The term carcinoma in situ describes a malignant tumor in its original position that has not yet been disturbed or invaded the surrounding tissues. An invasive malignancy grows and spreads into the healthy adjacent tissue. This figure shows the progression as colorectal cancer invades the surrounding tissues. Metastasize is a verb that describes the process by which cancer spreads from one place to another. The cancer starts at the primary site and spreads to a secondary site. A metastasis is the new cancer site that results from the spreading process. The metastasis may be within the same body system or in another body system at a distance from the primary site. Staging is the process of classifying tumors with respect to how far the disease has progressed, the potential for its responding to therapy, and the patient's prognosis. Specific staging systems are used for different types of cancer. A carcinoma is a malignant tumor that occurs in epithelial tissue. Epithelial tissue covers the internal and external surfaces of the body. These cancers tend to infiltrate and produce metastases that may affect any organ or any part of the body. For example, an adenocarcinoma is any one of the large group of carcinomas derived from glandular tissue. A sarcoma is a malignant tumor that arises from connective tissue. Tissues affected by sarcomas include bones, the bladder, kidneys, liver, lungs, muscles, and spleen. Hard tissue sarcomas arise from bone or cartilage. For example, osteosarcoma is a malignant tumor usually involving the upper shaft of long bones, the pelvis, or knee. Soft tissue sarcomas arise from tissues such as fat, muscle, and nerves. As an example, a myosarcoma is a malignant tumor derived from muscle tissue. Kaposi's sarcoma is an opportunistic infection frequently associated with HIV. It may affect the skin, mucous membranes, lymph nodes, and internal organs. A lymphoma is a general term applied to malignancies that develop in the lymphatic system. The two most common types are Hodgkin's disease and non-Hodgkin's lymphoma. Hodgkin's disease, also known as Hodgkin's lymphoma, is distinguished by the presence of Reed-Sternberg cells. These are large cancerous lymphocytes that are identified by microscopic examination of a biopsy taken from an enlarged lymph node. The staging system to describe this disease is shown here. The term non-Hodgkin's lymphomas is used to describe all lymphomas other than Hodgkin's lymphoma. In NHL, the cells of the lymphatic system divide and grow without any order or control. This causes tumors to develop in different locations on the body, and these cancers can also spread to other organs. The disease is described as low-grade, intermediate-grade, and high-grade. Treatment depends on the type and stage of NHL and usually includes chemotherapy, radiation therapy, and possibly a bone marrow transplant. A blastoma is a neoplasm composed chiefly or entirely of immature, undifferentiated cells. Blastomas are frequently named for the tissues involved. A neuroblastoma is a sarcoma of the nervous system origin. A retinoblastoma is a malignant tumor of childhood arising from cells of the retina of the eye and usually occurring before the third year of life. 
Breast cancer is a malignant tumor that develops from the cells of the breast and may spread to adjacent lymph nodes and other body sites. Invasive ductal carcinoma, also known as infiltrating ductal carcinoma, starts in the milk duct, breaks through the wall of that duct, and invades fatty breast tissue. IDC accounts for the majority of all breast cancers. Ductal carcinoma in C2 is breast cancer at its earliest stage, before the cancer has broken through the wall of the duct. At this stage, the cure rate is nearly 100%. Invasive lobular carcinoma, also known as infiltrating lobular carcinoma, is a cancer that starts in the milk glands, breaks through the wall of the gland, and invades the fatty tissue of the breast. Once the cancer reaches the lymph nodes, it can rapidly spread to distant parts of the body. Male breast cancer can occur in a small amount of breast tissue that is normally present in men. The types of cancers are similar to those occurring in women. Early detection is possible through breast self-examination, BSE, mammograms, and professional palpation. Diagnosis is confirmed by biopsy. A biopsy is the removal of tissue to conform a diagnosis. After a diagnosis has been established, Treatment is then based on the stage of the cancer. A lumpectomy is a surgical removal of only the cancerous tissue and a margin of normal tissue. A mastectomy is a surgical removal of an entire breast. A modified radial mastectomy is a surgical removal of the entire breast and axillary lymph nodes under the adjacent arm. The three most common forms of cancer treatments are surgery, chemotherapy, and radiation therapy. When possible, cancer surgery involves removing the malignancy plus a margin of normal surrounding tissue. Chemotherapy is the use of chemical agents and drugs in combinations selected to effectively destroy malignant cells and tissues. Radiation therapy is the treatment of cancers through the use of x-rays. The goal of these therapies is to destroy the cancer while sparing healthy tissues. Brachytherapy is the use of radioactive materials in contact with or implanted into the tissues to be treated. Teletherapy is radiation therapy administered at a distance from the body. With three-dimensional computer imaging, it is possible to aim doses more precisely. Don't forget to check out some of the career opportunities in this chapter, such as cytotechnologist, a clinical laboratory technologist who examines human cell samples under a microscope for signs of cancer, or a lymphedema specialist, providing decongestive lymphatic therapy, including skin care, manual lymphatic massage, bandaging, exercises, and instructions in self-care to lymphedema patients. And that's going to be it. That'll wrap up Chapter 6, the lymphatic and immune systems. Bring any questions that you have to class next week. Have a wonderful day. Be good people, do good things, and we'll see you next time. Bye-bye.